tonight remembering a true renaissance man. From the stage to the big and small screens, Gordon Pinson was an actor for all ages. In the coves, in the spring water, in the woods, in the smells of things, and the women. A massive body of work. Never gave a bad performance. Always humorous, humble. How are you today? Thank you, I'm Brad Pitt. And flaunting that Canadian charm. Waging war on the front lines. All my brothers, all my friends that are wounded, killed, that's the artist part. CTV News catches up with Canadian fighters in Ukraine. Plus, exploring the dark and the final frontier. It's okay to face your fears by just jumping into the unknown. A children's book by astronaut Chris Hadfield comes to life on the stage. CTV National News with Sandy Ronaldo. Good evening. You could call Gordon Pinsent Canadian acting royalty, a national treasure, a trailblazer. Well, none of those accolades ever went to his head. Pinsent, who died yesterday at 92, is being remembered as down to earth and funny. Sarah Pauly, who made her debut as a director with Pinsent in the film Away From Her, told CTV beyond his obvious brilliance and talent was his capacity for joy. Fellow Newfoundlander comic Rick Mercer called Pinsent a true renaissance man. And director Stephen Dunn, also from The Rock, says Pinsent paved the way for all of us working in entertainment. Pinsent, who passed away peacefully in his sleep surrounded by family, left behind a 60-year legacy that few can match. CTV's Annie Bergeron Oliver has Gordon's story. How are you today? Thank you. I'm Brad Pitt. <laughs> Gordon Pinsent had humor, humility, and a passion for acting that started at just 17 years old. I'm talking about inheriting my family business as Tsar of Russia. Come on, Red. Over his career that spanned more than six decades, the proud Newfoundlander racked up more than 150 acting credits, including The Red Green Show. I never wanted to be away from her. The Oscar-nominated movie, Away From Her. Have a look, what do you see? Tell me the headline. And Shipping News. You know, Quentin Durgan's Premier Thompson is the Premier. Among his most memorable, though, the 1965 classic, Quentin Durgan's MP. And the spring water in the woods and the smells of things and the women. And The Rowdy Men in 1972, a script Pinsent wrote himself and chose to produce in Newfoundland. To a younger generation, he's the voice of King Babar. Pollution. It's a terrible thing, children. And at age 80, he went viral for reading Justin Bieber's memoir. Yes, I wore a white shirt. Yes, I got spaghetti. When I was growing up on the East Coast, uh, the idea that this movie star was making movies in Newfoundland, just a couple of provinces away, was very exciting for us. And it really gave us a, a, a sense of, of pride. Born in 1930 to a large family, Pinsent, nicknamed Porky, loved picture shows from a young age. And years later, his own family would share his passion. His soulmate, Charmaine King, was also an actor, and their daughter, Leah, has dozens of acting credits to her name. In his hometown, Grand Falls, his legacy looms large. He has so many accolades, so many great things he's done in his lifetime. I know that his hometown had a very special place in his heart, and we're very sorry to hear the news. A poetic soul, Pinsent won every major acting award in the country and was named to the Order of Canada. Every day for him, a chance to pursue his passion. You don't like to think, oh, well, I've left the best of, best of me behind. No, no, that's, it's, it goes on and on and on, you know, uh, until one day you slip out of frame and you're, you're no longer there. Annie Bergeron Oliver, CTV News, Ottawa. Well, we wanted to talk a little bit more about Gordon Pinson. So joining us now, Canadian comedian, actor and writer Mark Critch, a close friend and of Gordon Pinson and a fellow Newfoundlander. So you met Gordon Pinson ah, 13 years ago. What made the two of you best friends? Well, I reached out to him and asked him for help filming a 22-minute sketch. He immediately said yes. 
And uh, once we were shooting, he kept asking me, what are you doing? Are you working? How can I help you? Do you need a hand? And he immediately became a mentor and a friend because that's what he did to people uh, when he met them, especially from Newfoundland. He wanted to make sure they were okay. And he was always in your corner as your biggest fan. Yeah, not only that, not only did he pave the way for a Newfoundland community of performers, but he made everyone he, he met feel special. He did that with me. I, I felt that I was the most important person in the world to him. Well, you were, because Gordon was never looking for the next person. That was a great thing about him. No matter who someone was, uh, when he was one-on-one -on -one with them, he was there with them, and, and, and he, he loved meeting Canadians of all walks of life. So knowing him the way you do did, what is it about him that you will miss the most? Oh, I'll just miss uh, getting the phone calls. And because as great an actor he was, he was an even better friend, you know? And he was always there for you. And he always was one of the people who check in. A little note, a phone call, a FaceTime. And uh, I'll, I'll miss uh, knowing that, you know, there's a father figure there all the time. And with Gordon gone, I, I feel like I'm grown up, which is a scary thing. But he, he's always present. The work is always there, and he's very easy to visit uh, in the cinema or on your phone or, or just by reading one of his many books. Okay, Mark Critch, appreciate your insight. Thank you. Well, on a day, Russia ramped up the fighting in eastern Ukraine. Vladimir Putin ramped up the rhetoric. Putin told government-controlled state media the West wants to destroy Russia, and his invasion of Ukraine is a fight for survival. Russian video today also revealed the utter devastation in the Ukrainian city of Bakhmut. This, as the U.S. warned China, it would be a mistake to supply lethal weapons to Russia. CTV's Richard Madden reports. With Russia's military reportedly running low on ammunition and weapons, top U.S. officials say China may be its next supplier. We're confident that the Chinese leadership is considering the provision of lethal equipment. We also don't see that a final decision has been made yet. CIA Director William Byrne says so far, there's no evidence China has supplied weapons to Russia, but the White House warns Beijing of harsh consequences if they do. Their weapons would in effect be used for the slaughter uh, of people in Ukraine. So I think it would be ill-advised for China to move forward, but of course that's a decision Beijing is gonna have to make for itself. We have intelligence that's been reported uh, that they are contemplating sending 100 drones into Russia. U.S. lawmakers who receive intelligence briefings say Russian President Vladimir Putin has long been courting Beijing for an arms deal. Reports say the two leaders will soon meet face to face as the war enters its second bloody year. The fact that they're going to meet next week, Chairman Xi and Putin, to discuss this unholy alliance that they have to put weapons into Ukraine to me is very disturbing. The CIA director says Russia's military struggles and Ukraine's continued support from the West has Putin scrambling to form alliances, refusing to back down. Putin, in many ways, I think, believes today that he cannot win for a while, but he can't afford to lose. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden had downplayed the issue, saying in a weekend interview he doesn't see China providing weaponry to Russia. But reports tonight, Biden and President Xi may speak, quote, in the not-too-distant future. Sandy. All right, Richard. Weapons are one thing, soldiers another. CTV's Adrian Gobriel met up with two Canadian fighters who have returned to Ukraine for a second tour. Fighting for freedom far from home. I'm still lucky to be alive right now. It's unknown how many Canadians have traveled to Ukraine to join the fight, according to Ottawa. CTV News connected with two former members of the Canadian military currently on the ground. For our interview, we traveled down a muddy rural road, instructed not to share the location. The two young Canadians are from Montreal. They also asked that we not use their real names. As we arrive at a wooded area, they reveal their story and their call signs on the battlefield, Speedy and Tonto. What is it that brought you to Ukraine to fight? So yeah, I saw a video of a kid crossing the border to Poland only with his passport and his toys. I have the image still in my head. I needed to come, like, as a duty. Uh, I wanted to help, fight. Speedy's first tour of duty lasted six months. For Tonto, four months. Both recently returned to Ukraine and reflected on the difficulty they experienced back home. When I got back to Canada, 
it's really hard to adapt to like a normal life after what you've what you've seen what you've done since the return the two canadians are now facing another harsh reality a lot of our friends got wounded killed that's the hardest part you know because you were with them are you concerned about your safety that you might not make it out i know that i can i can die here uh, i know i can get wounded neither had experienced active combat well with the canadian military but that changed once they arrived on the front lines. This war here, like uh, World War II war, there's trenches, there's artillery. In Russians, they never, uh, they have infinite ammo. I don't yeah, know how yeah, to explain it. They shell you, they shell you, and they never stop. While in the battle of their lives, the two, along with a third French-Canadian fighter, have launched Black Maple Company to raise money for their fallen brothers. Whatever we can, uh, give to wounded soldiers to make their morale uh, a little bit better. They're now preparing to head back to the Eastern Front as the Russian invasion rages on. It's still happening everywhere in Ukraine. So the children die. I will try to stay here as long as possible, as long as I can, uh, to help and fight for, for, the, for Ukraine, for the freedom of Ukraine. The two fighters are now waiting on paperwork so they can be paid by the Ukrainian military for as long as they stay in the fight. Sandy? Adrian, thank you. A chaotic scene in Nigeria's presidential election with polls open overnight and into today. <laughs> Hundreds were still in line almost 24 hours after voting was supposed to end. Malfunctioning voting machines and late arriving ballots apparently were behind the delay. There's a serious fight going on here at the LGA Collection Center. Fight, there were also fight. scattered incidents of violence, including at this polling station in Lagos, where teenagers posing as election officials attacked party representatives. Well, tragedy off the coast of Italy. At least 59 migrants are dead after their wooden boat smashed into rocks and capsized. The vessel was carrying more than 150 people seeking refuge in Europe. At least 80 survived, some found clinging to pieces of the boat. Many were later wrapped in blankets on shore next to rows of coffins. Rescuers are still searching the choppy waters, hoping to find other survivors. Bad weather has left residents of southern B.C. with a mess to clean up. And Environment Canada is warning it's not over yet. Nasty, yes, but nothing like the punishing conditions in California. CTV's Melanie Nagy reports. With spun out vehicles and tree blocked roads. Driving in Vancouver was nasty today. The city, along with large parts of BC's south coast, were hit with snow up to 40 centimeters in some places. Normally we always get one big dump in February, from what I remember. Yeah. So I'm hoping this is it. The storm moved in yesterday, starting out slowly as icy rain then picking up and turning into thick snow late evening. After the heavy snow fell overnight, the sun came out this morning, turning sidewalks and streets into a slushy mess. Trees were also toppled, knocking out power to thousands of people. Vancouver's International Airport also impacted. More than 200 flights canceled, leaving travelers like Dwight Bitts waiting over 12 hours to get home. Missed their flight to Kelowna got cancelled at 2 a.m. this morning while we were already here. Like southern B.C., southern California is grappling with storm aftermath. For days, parts of the region have been pummeled by snow, while other areas pounded by rain. Flash flooding in and around Los Angeles submerged cars yesterday, with one driver rescued after being stranded on top of his Porsche. North of the city, the swollen Santa Clara River carved into an embankment, and when it crumbled, a motorhome plunged backwards into the water. Back in B.C., cleanup continued throughout the day, but as the snow melted, there was a new warning. Another storm could hit as early as Monday. Melanie Nagy, CTV News, Vancouver. Video of an altercation involving an Edmonton police officer and an 18-year-old has Alberta's watchdog investigating the use of excessive force. Parking lot surveillance shows officers attempting to arrest the teen allegedly for erratic driving, with the situation escalating into head punches as he tried to get away. The driver is facing charges.
Well, just when you thought going food shopping couldn't get more expensive, grocery chains can now pass off the cost of credit card fees. And guess who's going to pay for the surcharge? CTV's Natalie Van Roy has our report tonight. A costly trip to the grocery store. We have about $80 worth of stuff in this small bag. A charge that went straight to a credit card. I typically pay using Visa, mainly for the cash back. Pretty well everything. I don't buy as much meat as I used to. Independent grocers say more shoppers than ever are paying for their food using credit. An expense that's charged back to the stores as they pay fees to the banks and the credit card companies. It's like another rent basically and it's a huge expense and it's just it's one of those expenses that it's impossible for us to control. Pat Nicastro says that cost is one of the reasons your grocery bill is increasing. A new obstacle not sitting well with consumers. I'm already paying my credit card, so why I will be I will pay for another thing, another fees, so no. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't need any more money taken from me. In October, businesses in Canada got the green light to pass credit card fees on to customers after a multi-million dollar class action settlement involving Visa and MasterCard. We have recommended to the government that the fees that uh, the retailer has to pay to the banks and the credit card companies, they should be significantly reduced. They're, they're up around 10 billion, that's billion with a B, in Canada. Canadian grocery giant Loblaw showed more than half a billion dollars in profits, adding food costs could continue to climb, leaving no reprieve for shoppers. Major grocery store CEOs, Loblaws among them, are being summoned next month to testify before Parliament about rising food prices. Sandy. Thank you, Natalie. Coming up, murder in Hong Kong. The shocking discovery at the alleged scene of the crime. The gruesome discovery of dismembered body parts has led to the arrest of the ex-husband, brother-in-law and in-laws of a popular Hong Kong model who went missing Wednesday. Police say they found the legs of 28-year-old Abby Choi inside a refrigerator in a residence believed to have been rented by the victim's father-in-law. They also discovered a skull and bones in cooking pots. Police think the victim was involved in a serious financial dispute with her ex-husband's family. Jordan hosted talks today between Israeli and Palestinian officials in an attempt to diffuse tensions in the West Bank, but it didn't stop the violence. Israeli settlers torched Palestinian houses and cars today after two Israeli brothers were killed. The Palestinians say one person was fatally shot. And hundreds of newspapers have dropped the long-running satirical cartoon Dilbert after a racist rant from its creator, Scott Adams. On an episode of his show, Real Coffee with Scott Adams, the cartoonist called black people a hate group and suggested white people should get away from them. His comments come during the final week of Black History Month. After the break, the master craftsman who reshaped his future in Canada. An artistic standout among the millions of people forced to flee the Russian onslaught in Ukraine. A talented woodworker has found sanctuary in Canada and he's carving out quite the name for himself. Here's CTV's Alberta Bureau Chief, Bill Fortier. When Oleksandr Saichov starts a project, it sounds and looks pretty rough for fine woodworking. But eventually, out of shapeless chunks of lumber, emerge this carving, this decorative front panel for a TV lift cabinet, or this mirror frame. Saichov is a master European carver who can't practice his art at home because it's been under attack by Russia for the past year. Through a translation app, he says, sadly, many of my friends are at war, but I personally cannot change anything. It's really, really unfortunate. Um, 
he knows some friends and stuff that have been injured and killed. Thomas Ross learned about Saichov and his efforts to get to Canada through an Edmonton woodworking Facebook page. So he brought him to his furniture building company where his unique talents are appreciated. It's just incredible to watch, really. Every time I come over here, it's just like, I don't understand how he does it. I am surprised, he says, that I found someone across the ocean and I feel comfortable working with him despite the language I don't understand. Thanks to technology, the biggest challenge has not been communication. It's been finding clients here looking for this level of artistry who are willing to pay for it. Nobody does this in Canada, right? This is very European. We're looking at into getting across shipping across Canada and shipping into the United States. For now, Saichov is learning some English. He has become close with the Ross family and is even staying with them. Love, love, <laughs> Thomas, uh, family. Uh, his plan is to make Canada a permanent home and eventually bring his family here. Bill Fortier, CTV News, Edmonton. Still ahead, peering into darkness. An astronaut's play puts fear in the crosshairs. We leave you tonight with a magical children's book transitioning from the page to the stage. Here's CTV's Donna Sound with a Canadian astronaut's theatrical adventure. This is Space Captain Chris. Do you copy? The Darkest Dark is the newest play at the Young People's Theatre, making its world premiere from the book written by a man who is used to dealing with astronomical feats. There's about at least a septillion planets, which is billion, trillion, quadrillion, quintillion, sextillion, septillion. Astronaut Chris Hadfield, the first do, Canadian to ever walk in space, is making history, transforming his bestseller into a play. Time for lights out. Lights out? Sharing a version of his younger self conquering his fear of the dark. To try and help kids understand that everybody's afraid, and it's what you do with your fear that is going to determine the path of your whole life. Ziska Louie plays young Chris as the main character who confronts his fear of the dark with the help of his friends. They kind of show him that it's okay to face your fears by just jumping into the unknown um, and trusting that the universe has you. Commander Hadsfield's fear took him to the darkest place of all. To actually put on a spacesuit, open up the hatch, and pull myself out into the universe alone. This play brings to life another dream of his. It's like if you made a, a sketch of a flower and then suddenly it was a living flower in front of you. I'm just a little bit scared. A message to teach kids not to be afraid, but to reach for the stars like he did. I personally want to be a scientist when I grow up. Discovering the world and what's beyond. It's out there in that darkness waiting for us to discover it and understand it. Daring to open up the minds of kids to dream big and conquer the next frontier that's literally out of this world. Donna Sound, CTV News, Toronto. That's our newscast for this Sunday. Thank you for sharing your weekend with us. I'm Sandy Ronaldo Omars here Monday. Have a good night and a safe week ahead. Bye for now.